everybody, welcome back to The Good Old Ways. My name is Julian, I'm so grateful that you're here. I usually like to start these videos with a little inspirational and beautiful imagery of our local area, but I'm just gonna get down and dirty with you guys today. Down and dirty with you guys? Should I cut that out? Leave it in. And I'm just gonna hop in and finish the second part of last week's video. If you haven't watched it yet, you might wanna go and check it out before you watch this one. In that video, we showed you the installation of the plumbing system in our mountain cabin. And today I just wanna give you a tour of what that actually looks like because I tried to do it last week with some arrows and text to point and label the different parts of the plumbing but I realized that it maybe wasn't as clear as it could have been. So today I really just want to walk you through everything so it's really clear what you saw in that video last week. Without further ado, let's get to the plumbing. So I am in the first floor of the cabin right now. I'm going to start though in the crawl space and then I'm gonna work my way up and show you guys just as I move, move up in the cabin. So let's get down into the crawl space. Yes, the crawl space is right in front of the front door. And one time, even though I knew this door was open, I forgot. And I walked through that front door and fell through the hole. And it was so painful. And I haven't forgotten since. And every time I open the door, I'm very cautious now. So at some point we're gonna have fancy little levers to pull this thing up. But right now we just have some screws, hammer, pull it up. All right, let's go down there. Don't forget the wine. Okay. How am I gonna get it? Perfect. This is kind of like a spooky video. So there are two parts to the plumbing system. There is the water supply system, which brings water throughout the house to the sinks, to the shower, to the toilet, etc. And then there is the drainage system, which takes all of the water from all those water features and sends them out to the septic system. I think it makes sense to start with the water supply system. So let's do that. So this blue pipe that comes out of the ground is directly from the well. It comes up out of the ground and into the water expansion tank. So this is a 22 gallon expansion tank. And basically if you're on a well water system, you need one of these expansion tanks to regulate the pressure in your system. So the idea is that if you have multiple faucets open and a shower running, for example, instead of having the pressure drop, the pressure is going to stay the same throughout the system. Putting one of these bad boys on a system like ours is really important because it means that we don't have to manually turn the pump on every single time we want to use the water. And that means if the pump isn't cycling all the time, then the pump is going to have a longer life cycle. So how this tank works is there's a diaphragm in here above which is air. So whenever the pump is on and it fills this tank with water and the diaphragm raises, it compresses the air and thereby increases the pressure in this system and then causes the pressure switch to turn off the pump. On the flip side, whenever water is being used in the house, it empties out of this tank and thereby reduces pressure in the tank and then turns the pump back on when it's needed to fill it back up again to a certain pressure. So this little guy right here is a, oops, is a spin down filter. So the water is gonna come out of the ground into the expansion tank through this pipe over here into the spin down filter, which essentially is a filter for a larger particulate. So if you had an old well, for example, maybe some rust chunks would get in here and that would prevent that. We have a new system, so that's not exactly what we expect, <laughs> but things like larger particulates of sand or gravel that gets in there, hopefully not, but that is what's gonna trap that. This bad boy is just a cartridge filter, which is even recommended on homes that are connected to municipal systems. So this is gonna catch anything that this doesn't. So any smaller pieces, silt, sand, sediment, dirt, and just generally ensure that we have really clean drinking water. So one of the things about our system that I think I might've told you guys in an earlier video is that our well supply actually has high levels of arsenic in it which isn't uncommon, but it's something that we are gonna have to filter out, but we're gonna install a filter on that closer to the supply, like under the sink in the kitchen, for example, where we're actually gonna be drinking our water. Now the water runs from here and then over to the tankless water heater. So this is an on-demand tankless water heater 
which is really awesome. It doesn't take up much space. As you can see, after it goes through the tankless hot water heater, then it becomes a red hot water pipe out of there. And then on the flip side, you can see that before it even goes into the tankless hot water heater, the water, the cool water splits off and goes all through the house. Woo! So that's to the kitchen. Uh, this is to the bathroom. And then, since we're just doing one at a time, I will go up and show you guys what that looks like. So, that's what you just saw from the crawl space, and it connects to these, which eventually will be hooked into the actual faucets. This is to the laundry machines, washing machines. And then this is to the bathroom sink, toilet, and to the shower. So this is the pipe that we went with for the drainage system. This is the drain from the laundry machine. And here is a P-trap. Every single P-trap needs a vent. So that's why this looks so crazy. But anyway, so that is for the laundry machine going out. That is the vent. I'll show you guys that in a second. This is the sink drain. This will be the toilet. This is the vent for the toilet. And this is the shower. And the rest of them vent up and out it is very dark up there right now and I don't feel like taking a light up there. So that vents up through the wall and then out through the roof. And then the only other drainage item we have in here is this from the kitchen sink, which also goes out. All right, now we're back down here. And this is what you guys saw, Justin Tetrising so much so this is the shower p-trap vent for the shower comes out comes out this is the toilet vent for the toilet comes out this is the sink out and the laundry machine laundry machines out and then that one right over there is from the kitchen sink so then it comes out here and it goes out through this hole to the septic tank. So the reason that you need a vent on the other side of every single P-trap is because of the way the P-trap works. So the P-trap has a low point in the plumbing and because it's a low point, it's always gonna contain water. And because it's always gonna contain water, it's gonna be blocking any toxic or foul smells that are trapped in your septic and drainage system and it's gonna prevent those gases from coming back up into the home. If you guys haven't seen the video on the installation of the septic tank and the septic system, I will put a link to it right here. We try to give you guys a really detailed breakdown of the installation of it, so if you're interested in that or need to learn about it, go check that out. So that is our plumbing system in a nutshell. Again, if you haven't seen the video of the installation, I highly recommend you go back and check it out because Justin did an amazing job installing it and it's pretty fun to watch because it's such an iterative process to get all of the pipes fitted together from upstairs and downstairs. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out right here, Boop. or I'll link below too. And with that, thanks for watching this tour. I hope it clarifies some things for you. If you have any questions, drop us a comment below and we'll make sure we get to it. If you found this video helpful or you like the vision that we have going on, please consider joining our family and clicking that subscribe button below. It actually really, really helps us get the word out and connect with like-minded people like you who are also trying to live this crazy, amazing dream of building a homestead from the ground up or living a life a little bit alternative to the norm. So grateful you're here and until next time guys, bye. Okay, wait, before you guys go, I just wanna let you know that the next video we do or one of the next videos coming up is gonna be the electrical work. Justin is wiring this whole place by himself and as you can see, he has already gotten started. So 
If you are interested in learning about that, then stay tuned for the next video. See you guys.